If you want to become a confident engineer and learn how to independently design and deliver projects from start to finish, I'm going to explain exactly how to do it. Because the truth is, if you're struggling to apply structural engineering concepts to real projects, you're probably just approaching the engineering game with the wrong strategy. Now, over the last few years, I've sent out lots of designs, and these designs have ranged from small things like swimming pools and retaining walls, all the way to big things like luxury multi-story residential houses and entire industrial warehouse developments. But realistically, one of the main reasons why I'm able to take a project from start to finish so early in my career is because I've deep dived and dissected the individual steps that it takes to complete a project and deeply understand what's required at each step. And the sad thing is no one teaches you this stuff at university or even when you start working. But all the successful engineers that rise to the top of companies or go independent and start their own business truly understand this process and are using it to make tens of thousands of dollars if not hundreds of thousands of dollars each month. Although this process isn't for everyone and that's exactly the point. So for those of you who are ready in this video, I'm going to take you through the six proven steps that'll take you from beginner to a competent engineer. Alright, so the first real step to becoming a confident engineer is making sure you properly understand the fundamentals. And I'm talking about your bread and butter concepts here. Things like bending moment and shear force diagrams, deflected shapes, material strengths and properties, and really how all this base knowledge is interconnected. Now, a lot of these basics are covered at university, and if you still have access to your university material, or you're still at university, that's great. Really pay attention and take advantage of this information. But for those of you who don't have access to university content anymore, or you want to go beyond the material you were provided, you don't need to spend tens of thousands of dollars to get access to it all again. There's plenty of free or relatively cheap content out there, like YouTube tutorials, tutorials, structural engineering blogs, guides and textbooks, or even private short courses. Nowadays you can also supplement any of this material with other tools like ChatGPT and really speed up your learning process. Even for me these days, when I'm designing something new or slightly different, I will still start at this initial step. So just keep in mind that these first couple of steps in the process are ones that you will complete over and over as you face new problems or design challenges. Also, if you're just starting out and you're finding that you've got a few gaps in your your foundational math or science knowledge, that's where the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant, can really come in handy. In case you haven't heard of Brilliant, Brilliant is one of the top online learning platforms for STEM. They've got thousands of interactive lessons across topics like math, science, computer science, and data analysis. Within each topic, there are individual courses that have been broken down into short bite-sized lessons that you can complete at your own pace. What I think really makes Brilliant stand out is how hands-on it is. Every lesson is interactive and designed to feel more like a game than a lecture. You're not just sitting back watching videos, you're actually solving problems as you go. From my experience, the maths and science lessons are really well done. They simplify tricky ideas with clean visuals and they cut straight to the stuff that's actually useful, so it feels like time well spent. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, be sure to check them out using my link in the description. And if you decide to stick with it, you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to to it. In any case, once you stop memorizing concepts and instead actually understand them, you can start reasoning your way through problems, which takes us to our next step, which is application. Now, knowing the theory is one thing, but knowing how to use it, that's what real engineers need to know how to do. When you're just starting out, it's natural to second guess yourself and get stuck wondering if you're doing things right. But what really snaps you out of it is doing full hand calculation checks of actual elements beams, slabs, columns, footings, you name it. This is where you really start to build confidence. You go from, I think this works, to I know this works because I've calculated it myself. And it doesn't have to be overly complex either. Pick a typical steel beam and calculate it from first principles. Then do the same for a concrete slab, a retaining wall, and a pad footing. Being able to do these checks yourself and see the result of every check allows you to not just accept the sizes from the software, but to actually judge them and challenge them with hand calcs if you need to. Yes, it takes time, and yes, it's tedious at the start, but here's the return on investment. You'll be able to confidently answer client questions, challenge assumptions in drawings, and spot when something just doesn't look right. Also, I recommend keeping a separate workbook or folder of all your past calculations because these will become gold later on. 
not only can you refer back to them if you need to, but they'll also become a growing portfolio of your technical ability. Now, once you're able to consistently apply the theory to real design problems, you're ready to supercharge your output. And that's where the next step comes in, which is analysis tools. Okay, so once you understand the concepts and can apply them manually, the next step is to scale up. And that means using the right tools. Now, I'll be honest, while hand calculations are good for gaining an understanding and for doing a quick check here and there, majority of engineering isn't about doing things by hand. It's about delivering accurate solutions quickly and confidently, and that means automating where you can. Personally, I've built my own Excel spreadsheets for checks I do often like concrete beam and retaining wall design, and I've also learned a lot about different software packages like Space Gas and RAND Concept. But importantly, these tools don't replace my understanding, they reinforce it. By having that foundational understanding, I can critique what the software is doing and fix things when it's giving me rubbish. The key takeaway here is use tools to scale, not to replace your thinking. You've probably heard this before, but if you put rubbish into a program, you'll get rubbish out. So be vigilant and make sure you agree with your results. Now, once you're up to speed on the theory and analysis side of things and are comfortable with the technical steps, you have to be able to prepare your projects so that there's something that can actually be sent out to a client. And that starts with the next step, which is setting the stage. All right, so before you go into full technical mode, like most new engineers do as soon as they get a project, you need to set the stage. What I mean by this is that you need to put together the overall layout of the drawing package. This typically starts with a title page and a few pages of relevant general notes, labeling and setting aside a page for each group of details, and also setting up a page for each plan or general arrangement you will need. If you're working in an office with an existing format and style, copy it so your project looks identical. If you're working in a small team or solo, push to help standardize drawing content or build your own systems. This consistency saves so much time on every job. Try to think of it like this. Your time should be spent solving unique design problems, not redoing the same admin and setup work on every project. By standardizing this whole process, you'll also reduce mistakes. When your drawings follow a pattern, it becomes easier to review easier for others to interpret, and easier for you to pick up old projects and instantly know what's going on. When I first started doing my own drawings, I was winging it every time, and it showed. My notes were inconsistent, my details didn't match, and I was wasting hours redrawing the same things. But once I invested the time to create a proper set of drawing templates and had some reusable content, my workflow improved overnight. Anyhow, once your drawings are set up, you're now in the perfect position to start putting some content onto them. But you need to do this in the right order. So that takes me to the next step, which is layout first, analysis second. Okay, so if I could teach just one thing to all new structural engineers, it would probably be this. Do all your layouts first before doing any analysis. The reason I want all new engineers to hear this is because early on, pretty much all new engineers get too excited about analysis programs and spend heaps of time building out a full model or just doing general analysis only to realize the layout they breezed over doesn't even work. And this could be because it doesn't align with the architectural intent or simply because they didn't assess the different layout options they had before they got started. Spending extra time on your framing, slab and footing plans and making sure it aligns with the architecture and that all the load paths are accounted for is critical. It sounds simple, but if you can get this right from the start, you'll save yourself so much time and headache. Plus, thinking through the layout also forces you to consider things like the connection types, construction sequency, and just overall buildability. And here's the other upside. When you're the one doing the layout, you're the one leading the design, not following it. So get comfortable drawing out your layouts early and adjusting them until you're confident everything looks good. That's what senior engineers are doing and it's what you should be doing too. All right, now once you've done your layout and verified it with analysis, all that's left is your final set of markups and drafting, and then the project will be ready to be sent out. But when one project goes out, that means you're ready for another. So the final step is something that will make your life easier and your next project better, which is create a library. Now, what this is, is an engineering library that gets built over time. It should include things like past projects, standard connection details, custom Excel design tools, PDF versions of textbooks and guides, and a bunch of old hand calculations. And this library is not just about reusing old work, it's about learning from it. Each project adds to your experience, and by documenting your solutions, you create a personal database you can draw from over and over again. Now to get started doing this, I suggest you start by making some sort of organization system that works for you. 
whether that's by project type, by structural element, by software, or even a combination. Just make sure you use a clear naming convention and that everything's searchable. Your future self will definitely thank you when you're working late to meet a deadline and you remember that you can pull on something that's in your library. So if you're serious about becoming a confident, independent engineer, don't just focus on one project at a time, build a system that helps you solve more problems faster. Anyways, I hope that you learned something in this video and if you did enjoy it, you might like to check out either of these two videos here where I go through some technical design in detail. As always though, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.